I think this is where you guys are gonna just go crazy. I think this is where we're really just leaving the modern farmhouse behind. This is where we're gonna see a huge shift and I think this is the most exciting part. Oh God, no, the garden. Oh no, I'm never gonna be able to decide. <laughs> it's all so good, you guys are gonna love this. Well, hello, welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and I work as a designer in the Atlanta area if you're just tuning in. And today we are gonna be talking all about one of the biggest trends. This is bigger than just 2023, 2024. This is going to be a movement in the interior design world and it is going to take over. You're gonna be seeing this everywhere. So what are we talking about? What is this style? The style is modern cottage. I know, did anybody else just like, <laughs> no, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. It's going to be charming. It's going to be beautiful and luxurious and yet approachable and homey. It's going to be everything that we dream of a home being, it's gonna be all those things. I'm gonna be sharing with you who, why, how, what, where, all those questions that you're gonna be asking, I'm gonna answer all of them today. We're gonna to talk about everything from the color palette to the architectural elements, everything. It's gonna be amazing. I know you guys are going to love this style. I truly believe that this is the next thing from Modern Farmhouse. This is the next phase of design. People are just ready for something that's just a little bit cozier. They miss the details that used to be in a more traditional home. This style is bringing all of that back. So you guys, I know there's some of you that did not do Modern Farmhouse and you've just been kind of like waiting for the, that thing this is it, you're gonna love it. So make sure you hit subscribe because we will be unpacking this idea more. We're going to be sharing ideas on how to create this in your current home. You don't have to move to get this style. I mean, you can if you want to, <laughs> but we're gonna show you ways to bring it into your current home, what you'll need, the elements, all of it. We're gonna tell you everything you're gonna need and we'll be sharing how to do it as we go into uh, the rest of this year and into next year. But I don't think that this is going to be, I call it a trend because right, that's a word that a lot of people understand, but I really think this is more of a movement and we are gonna have some serious fun unpacking this. Let's jump in before I gotta put my coffee down. I'm like, ah, so excited. It's gonna be so good. I've been thinking about this for absolutely weeks. I'm dying over it. So let's jump in. Let's talk about what is Modern Cottage. Modern Cottage is a combination of a English country cottage, French country, kind of have a lot of those sort of elements, a little bleed over there on that style, blended with modern times, modern details, modern clean lines. I think that this style really comes from a lot of the trends that we've been seeing that have been really popular, like cottage core and modern farmhouse. I think this is a combination of these being put together and there is also this style, I don't like the name of it, but it has been really popular and that is old money aesthetic. And it's that sort of like British aristocrat countryside, that kind of feeling, right? That all these things are gonna come together. So basically this style is a combination of cottage core, modern, and a little bit of English manor kind of, all kind of having a baby. <laughs> It's not the modern, it, it's not the manor house. It's not the biggest house on the property, right? It's not the, it's not the huge proportions. This is gonna be smaller proportions. It's a smaller home, it's cozier. It's not a farmhouse because it could be located on farm land, but it's not, it's not traditional American design. It's really rooted in the English cottage style. It's also not cottage core <laughs> because it's not gonna just be like all 
older details, all antique furniture. It's not gonna be all antique style uh, and lots and lots of florals and things. It's not that. And there, let me just say this in advance. None of those styles are bad. You might like all of those, which is why you might find yourself loving this style because it's gonna combine a lot of the things that you really love into a space that is warm, it's neutral, it feels modern, and yet you get all the favorite things that you really love from all those different styles. So you're, you're, we're, gonna, we're gonna cherry pick out of those styles and bring them into one that really just feels really cohesive and relevant to today's times. Guys, I'm so excited to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is Aquasana. Doesn't really matter where you live, what style of home you have, it's so important to have clean drinking water. Aquasana offers filtration systems that provide maximum contaminant reduction while leaving beneficial materials like potassium, calcium, and magnesium in the water. Aquasana uses award-winning filtration technology that's designed by expert engineers and inspired by you. The amazing thing about Aquasana is that it literally just uses tap water and it is with a simple push of a button and literally you get clean water. I find that a lot of the pitchers and maybe the ones that are in the fridge, they tend to really be kind of slow and they the filters go out really fast. Aquasana's clean water machine uses power for super fast and effective filtration. You get an eight ounce filter glass of water in about eight seconds. It also lasts up to seven and a half times longer than the leading pitcher filter. And the best part about it is that it tastes absolutely delicious. Mm. Of course, the other thing that I love as a designer is that it looks absolutely amazing sitting out. I know you guys are gonna love it. You're gonna wanna use my discount code. If you guys are ready to start drinking cleaner, healthier water, click my link down below and use my code Valentina55 to get 55% off all filters plus free shipping. I'll leave all the details down below in the show notes. Thank you again to Aquasana for being our video sponsor. Why do people want this? I think that people really want this style because they're tired of overly clean lines. Scandinavian design has really been popular. That super, super minimal, really pulled back style has been so popular. People have been ripping out all the older details of their homes. They've been ripping out the old staircases. They've been ripping out all the trim work, ripping out the fireplaces, all the traditional stuff, just getting rid of all of it and replacing it with something that's really, really clean and really minimal. And I think that for those of us that didn't rip it out, we always felt a little bit like, oh, we weren't quite on trend. And I'm like, I'm not that worried. This is what I want. I love my fireplace. I've had so many people walk in and ask me, why didn't you take that out? I'm like, because I just liked it. <laughs> I like the detail. I really like the detail. I like there to be some of the traditional elements in the home, and I really like that. And I think that's why this style appeals to me in particular, because I really like those traditional elements. I like the architecture of a more traditional home, but I also love things that are modern. It's a little bit like my outfit. I'm wearing lace and I'm wearing leather, right? Like this is, that's my personal preference. You can balance these things out and choose to have more cottage or more modern. You can play the balance however you want but ultimately it is a combination of bringing in clean lines while still maintaining quite a few traditional elements. I think that's why people really like it because I think that the overly minimal can start to feel a little bit cold. It can start to feel a little bit empty. And for those of us that just crave a sort of coziness, we love maybe some pillows, we love some greenery, we love some things. I think that's why this style is really gonna be what people are looking for, it's what they're craving. Let's talk about the color palette because let's be honest, the color palette is a really important aspect of any project before you start. When we're talking about design, I always start with the color palette because it, it informs all of the decisions that we have to make going forward. So this style blends modern and traditional kind of classic English, French cottage. It combines these elements. And in order for it to feel both modern and cottagey, I think that it really does need a warm, neutral color palette. I think that it's not going to be overly modern. It won't be overly contemporary, overly white and clean line. It will not be overly that, but it will also not be, it's not cottage core. <laughs> so it's not going to be lots and lots and lots of colors and patterns. It's gonna be all these things kind of combined. So this color palette is perfect for warm neutrals because you will be combining really, really deep washed out blacks, 
rich, dark brown with warm caramel, rich taupe, creamy whites. You could also have some accents of some deep, rich navy and some pale blue. Definitely needs some shades of green mixed in, but the overall palette will be more minimal and it will definitely be more neutral rather than lots and lots of colors. I think that's where the style really does differentiate from cottage core and where you get that little modernness in, it's the warm neutrals that are really kind of balancing out this space. All right, let's next talk about the materials because let's face it, the materials are gonna be really important to this style. We really need to know, Valentino, what is this all about? <laughs> spill the tea, woman. <laughs> Preferably in a really cute English cottage setting, but yes, yeah, spill the tea. <laughs> this one, I think this is where you guys are gonna just go crazy. I think this is where we're really just leaving the modern farmhouse behind. I think this is where we're gonna be shifting quite a bit because those modern farmhouses were all about having almost no embellishment on the house, right? We had some embellishment, but very little. This is where we're gonna see a huge shift and I think this is the most exciting part. Oh God, no, the garden. Oh no, I'm never gonna be able to decide. <laughs> it's all so good, you guys are gonna love this. Okay. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for weeks on end and I'm so excited to get this literally out of my system. So <laughs> I will try to rein it in a little bit. <laughs> Materials that you are going to love. You are going to love the style because it is gonna be a combination of beautiful warm stone, it's gonna be washed out brick, it's going to be uh, rustic wood, but it could also have a slightly less rustic wood, right? Because we're combining elements. You're gonna see wood just used in a lot of different ways, whether it's beams, whether it's flooring, whether it's shutters back on the exterior of the home. I know a lot of the things that we've been stripping off the house, we're gonna start putting them back on. That's why this style is just getting me so excited. So cobblestone, you'll also expect, uh, you could also use stucco in this style. You can have a combination of all of these elements. Think thatch roof, some metal, not as much metal, okay? So we've seen a lot of metal roofs with the farmhouse movement. Lots of modern homes have them. We're gonna be moving away from that slightly, but you don't have to get rid of it completely. You could also add some shaker shingles, a cedar shake roof, uh, brass, iron, marble, limestone, copper, all these materials that just bring, they just literally infuse warmth and texture into the home, we're just gonna bring all of those back. And we're not gonna use them everywhere, right? Because we're still talking about something being modern. So yes, you can take an older home and infuse this style into it, but if you're gonna be building a new home, you're probably going to have a little bit larger proportions than a traditional college. Maybe you're not gonna have a seven and a half foot ceiling, right? <laughs> There's elements that we're going to take from that English cottage and French cottage style. We're gonna infuse them into this, but we're gonna add some modernness into it. And so I think that when you think about how you're gonna use the materials, you can really, this is where your personal taste is gonna be where you get to have the fun. And you get to decide how modern do you want it to be and how cottagey do you want it to be. And you're gonna kind of combine these. You might have a 75, 25 combination cottage here, modern here, or you could totally flip them, you could go 50-50. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this one. But let's talk about the architecture for just a second, because I think this is where the ideas are really gonna kind of fuse together. This is definitely, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. So you'll drive down this, when we're, especially in Atlanta, where we're down in the city and a lot of the houses are really cute cottages. And then there's like this weird addition onto one of those. And it's this modern thing that just looks like it was literally just stuck onto the house and it really doesn't go. We don't want that in the architecture. We want there to be a cohesiveness. And so I think that keeping the lines a little bit more clean on the cottage look and then infusing some of those cottage elements that's where you're going to get this sort of really happy balance and that's gonna really just come alive. I think the scale is also gonna be a lot smaller than a manor house. Think about 3,500 square feet is probably gonna be your max on a cottage. 
it's gonna become a manor. Like once you get too big, it's too big. It's no longer a cottage. It's gonna be really hard to make it feel cottagey because if you have too many big ceilings, if you've got too many big proportions, you're gonna be kind of battling with that. It's not that you can't transform something that's really big, but you probably would be thinking about putting up some walls or adding some doors or trying to bring in that cozy factor to bring the proportions down just a little bit to get a cottage feel. So generally speaking, this will be a smaller home, but you could also adapt the idea. Either way, the good news is that everything that you love from the English cottage the things like those pitched roofs, think about the arched doorways, the arched door entrances. Oh, it's one of my favorite things ever. I just think of when we were in the Cotswolds and all the beautiful little cottages that were there and just bringing a lot of those elements into a little bit more of a modern setting. So the wraparound porch that we associate with farmhouse, not gonna be on this style. Generally speaking, those cottages have a small porch, but they don't have a huge wraparound porch. The focus on the modern cottage is actually the back side of the house and the garden on the back side. So there's also gonna be beautiful stone and brick fireplaces. You're gonna look for those details to start coming back. I'm really just seeing the difference on the house with them. All right, so let's go inside. Let's walk through that beautiful little arched cottage door. Let's walk inside. Let's go inside and see what we've got. Well, first of all, the interior of the space is going to be a real fusion, again, of the modern, classic, clean lines combined with a lot of those sort of cottagey elements. So you might even see some, some roll arms coming back, but done in a more minimal way. You're gonna see some florals coming back in, but again, quite pared back. There's this feeling of a, a fusion of minimalism and uh, this sort of like softness and coziness all combined. When it comes to the interior, I think you have to revisit that color palette too, because inside it's gonna be really important that you're not gonna suddenly just have pink florals, blue paisley, right? A bright yellow sofa. Like we're not gonna go super cottage court here. We're going to still have those clean lines, a minimal, like just really neutral pale color. You could still have a pop of black like I do. You can still go more modern or you can also lean more into that cottage side. That's where it's gonna be, the, that's where the fun starts. That's where the fun is. So you might have some more traditional lamps combined with a modern sofa, and you might have a few more pillows, and you're just gonna be kind of going back and forth between these two styles. It's, I think you're gonna love it. I think rooms like a drawing room will st or a parlor, those words are words that we'll use with the cottage. You're thinking about cozier spaces, a library, a hearth. Like these are the things that really just, we all just love about the cottage style. We're gonna bring them into our little modern cottage and I think we're gonna love them. When we get to the kitchen, because the kitchen, they always say, is the heart of the home, this style definitely emanates from the kitchen. This style is all about, it is a, a combination of those clean lines with cottage infused into it. So you might have, you might have a shaker style cabinet, or you might even have something a little bit more traditional, but then the layout itself is quite, it's quite pared back. It's quite modern. That's what's really fun about this style, is that you might have more of a slab top on your countertops, but combined with beautiful copper or uh, live brass fittings. You'll have maybe some live brass on the handles, some of that infused with a little bit of modernness, maybe a little bit bigger proportions as well. You might have a bigger kitchen. It doesn't have to be a tiny kitchen just because it is a cottage style. You're just gonna have to play with what you have, what you, the money you have, the land you've got, what you're working with, and see what you really want. But I do think that it's gonna be a real combination of the elements here. I do think that you'll revisit the color palette in here. You're gonna be revisiting those warm neutrals. You'll also be revisiting the materials that we talked about for the exterior. We're now gonna use them on the interior as well. So you'll have wood and you'll have copper and you'll have stone, you'll have uh, brass, you'll have marble, limestone. All of these elements work in the modern cottage. I do think that in the modern cottage kitchen, it's just a little bit more pared back. It's just a little bit more clean lined. And I think that's where you guys are gonna absolutely have a blast putting this together. Let's talk about my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I think this is my favorite part. I think this actually is my favorite part. 
Yeah, okay, I, I'm literally just dying over it, okay? Because I think that the thing that I have found is that I just really love to have a garden. And I think that so often we think of the, the grass and the bushes that are around our homes, we think of them as landscaping. And for me, having lived in Europe for about a decade, one of the things that I really love about Europeans is that they really focus in on creating a garden. So it doesn't mean that you have to take away your lawn. You can still have a lawn with this style, but the garden is the most important aspect, I think, of this style. You cannot have this style without considering the garden. And it is still, like Americans call it the yard. You're still talking about the yard, especially for those of us that live in HOAs. We don't have the freedom to just take out our lawn, right, out of the front but you can still bring the garden and that feeling into from entrance all the way through to the backyard and all the way around your space. From the moment you come up to the home, you're gonna notice maybe a combination of boxwoods, you're gonna notice some structure on the house, but then there's this sort of cottage feeling. Maybe it's geraniums or hydrangea overflowing on the porch. Maybe there's some lavender in your, in your garden out in the front. You've got some beautiful trees and there's this feeling of coziness even from the very entrance. Uh, I think having climbing, climbing, <laughs> all sorts of climbing flowers, whether it's climbing roses, wisteria, um, ivies, you'll have uh, jasmine. Oh, jasmine's one of my favorites all these crawling up the house, going over arbors, all that kind of stuff. Definitely bring all of that. Bring all of that. All the stuff that you love about the English and those, it's a sort of combination of English and French gardens. You might have a, a combination of formality and also informality. You might have some hedges with boxwoods while also having maybe an English hedge that's just more frothy and flowy and less structured. I think you can have all of it. This style also would have maybe a stone patio. Not all of us are gonna have that. It's okay if you've got a deck, you can still bring all these elements. Think about adding planters to the back deck. Think about if you've got a yard, maybe having a lawn, but also having the potager, the French potager, potager. I don't know. I think I said that wrong. Uh, but either way, the edible garden, really bringing all of that into, the, into your space that you have. I mean, I'm not sitting on a big plot of land. I think this one could have a greenhouse style and you could have an orchard with beautiful trees and uh, like I said, like the small greenhouse and the edible garden. You could have all of that or you might just have one piece of it. You might even just have a like a little tiny conservatory, a small little sunroom where you have plants. It might just be a covered porch. It doesn't matter. It's not about size here. In fact, if anything, those of you who have the really big houses will have a little bit more work cut out for you trying to bring the coziness back in. You can definitely do this style. Either way, I think having a lot of fun, putting out some great seating, thinking about maybe a fire pit area, a fireplace. These cottages are all about the garden and being out doors and celebrating that. So even if you're a novice like I am as far as the garden, you can still bring these elements in and build them into the structure of the garden and the yard that you have. That's where the real fun is gonna be. The biggest difference between this and the modern manor, which we talked about just recently, if you did not see that one and you like something that's just a little bit more formal, you really need to watch the Modern Manor video because I think you will love that style. Either way, the Modern Cottage is just a little less formal, the material's a little bit more humble, the proportions are just a little bit smaller, and there's a real cozy factor that really comes into this cottage style a little bit more than the Modern Manor. And that's why I'm like, oh, I think people are just going to freak over this style. I think everyone's going to just want it. So yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm going to be unpacking this style even more. I'm gonna be showing you examples. I've got some amazing finds from Ikea that I'm gonna be sharing with you on how you can do this on a budget. When something doesn't necessarily exist yet, we I can see it, I know what it's gonna be, but there isn't necessarily a, a full picture of it yet. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to put all those ideas together for you so I can really just kind of infer to you what I see in my mind. But I think you're gonna love it. I hope you'll hit subscribe so that we can unpack this idea a little bit more together and talk about it. We'll be sharing room makeovers and showing you how to style your spaces up. You don't have to sell your house. You don't have to bulldoze it. You're gonna be adding a lot back probably if you did a more minimal or farmhouse kind of look. So I think you're gonna love this. So thank you again for joining me. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>